Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. In our last episode, we discussed the uh, pathway towards legalization and what type of process we'll have to go through to make that happen pretty quick. And I hope, I uh, appreciate all the viewings that we got on that. And I hope each of you that saw that and, and even those that haven't or may have heard, jump on board and email your president, email your senators, vote for the people that support legalizing hemp and, and getting cannabis legal. And uh, I think you're probably electing some good people if, they're, if they are running on that platform. But there's other things we can do also, though, to make sure this comes about. And if y'all are like me, and I'm sure most of you are, you don't really like the idea of the government deciding for you which herbs that you can use and which ones you can't. And cannabis is that. It just happens to be an herb amongst the hundreds of thousands of them that are grow around the world and that people use not only for medicinal purposes, but for culinary purposes and whatever they use them for and all. And it's not the right of anybody to tell you that you cannot use an herb that you see or want to grow and use in these, in these ways. And cannabis fits right in with that group, particularly with the fact that we know that it's not dangerous and that it does have extreme medicinal value and extreme textile value and all of that. So it's, you know, the government's been playing this game with everybody in the United States for a long, long time, over seven decades, and it's all been backed by lies. And they hype the public up, the people, the part of the public that doesn't smoke and all, they hype them up to the point that they really do believe all of the BS that the government puts out. And of course, we all know what goes on when you make a substance illegal. I mean, you just look south of the border and all the atrocities that are going on in Mexico and all. I mean. We would really, as a society, rather have something like that going on instead of just making the herb legal and turning it over to the free market society like it's supposed to be. I mean, really, is it anybody's choice other than your own to use this herb? Of course it's not. And the government particularly has no right to interfere with anybody's personal life. The founding fathers, when they wrote the Constitution and all, if they even had any kind of idea of what these people in control are doing today, they would roll over in their graves at this very moment because it's completely the antithesis of what they set up <clears throat> when we set up the Constitution. But next week, uh, June 4th through June 10th, is Hemp History Week. and. Uh, you can go to hemphistoryweek.com. There's a lot of uh, activities that they talk about. And uh, this, this is in plight for the American farmer. The, they've been hurt so bad by all of these. A lot of these foreign, these uh, big corporate uh, farms that in America that are growing the food and the reason prices are getting so high, they're owned by these huge corporations whose stock members you know, ex de demand a certain percentage when they have their stock meetings and all that. And the only way they can reach the kind of levels and profits that these guys are demanding is to raise the price of the food on the general public that when you go to the store and all. And that's what that's all about. A lot of these conglomerates are owned by foreign companies, some of them that we've been in skirmishes with before. And yet they have this rule over the American farmer, the one that's trying to make money. And uh, if we could bring the hemp industry back, this would be one way that the American farmer could really come back and make a comeback and actually it would be, be a fantastic way to make a living. And uh, there, there are many families out there that are just hanging on by the thinnest of threads because of all these government regulations, all these pesticides that these corporations are pushing and stuff like that. And this is just totally unnecessary. We're, we create this evil monster and, and in order to perpetuate it, we have to just keep continuing with these lies and all. And the whole time while we're doing it, we hurt the American farmer, we hurt the American people, we hurt the American economy, we hurt, we hurt everything in general. I mean, it's just, we create this hatred among men out there that it's, it's all false, it's all based on nothing. And none of this would exist if this herb was legal. And so as <clears throat> History Week comes next week, and it's the 4th through the 10th, Get out and support the cannabis movement in any way you can. If you hear people talking down about pot, post it on your Facebooks. I mean, if they can make, you know, a goofy video on face on uh, YouTube, get over a million hits, surely we can get a campaign going out there on Facebook or all of the other mediums and all that addresses this issue, that talks about how unfair it is that the government even has a law like this. And we're, 
We want people to be able to use cannabis for medical marijuana, but we do not want medical marijuana if it means having to go to a doctor and having all this regulation and stuff. That's not going to work. The cannabis smokers were here long before medical marijuana ever became an issue. And it's unfair to them to just say, oh, okay, well, we're going to let the people here as long as they go to a doctor and get a prescription, we're going to allow them to possess cannabis. And that was probably the one of the reasons that originally that the idea came about that people thought well this would be a way we can possess cannabis legally but it's not it's just more regulation by the government and then what happens the drug enforcement agency moves in and and pretends that all, everything they said didn't exist and they didn't say it so you know folks we've got to really get out there get a campaign going and i mean in every way you can it's the only way it's going to happen you've got to educate people you've got to sh to tell them that this is a very valuable textile that could really help our economy. We could replace all of the foreign oil that we export into this country, I mean import into this country. And, and this, is a, this is at a cost of about $800 billion a year to the American public. And, and it, there's no need for that. And that money doesn't stay here. It doesn't help our economy any. Ha helpings in a few jobs at gas stations here and there, but the bulk of this money goes right back to the people that we bought the oil from, and it's unnecessary. Not to mention the other 50,000 products that can be made from hemp and that would be very competitive in the marketplace, in the world markets and all that. We're, we're just foolish to let this go by and let these foreign countries that aren't even as set up as we are, you know, can do the hemp business. And then we hurt the American farmer and, the, and our economy. It's just stupid. And all over cannabis, an herb that's safe, whose side effects, oh yeah, they make you feel good. Big deal. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with feeling good? That's what I don't get. It's like it's some big sin or something because you smoke a joint and you feel good. It's ridiculous. People who smoke cannabis are not criminals. And it's, and it's time to throw these laws out the window. It's time to make hemp legal. And it's time to straighten this country out and follow our Constitution for once. And if you can't figure out a better way to support the hemp movement and the marijuana movement and all that, then vote for this man right here, Ron Paul, because he is the only candidate that's run that has, in his entire campaign, he has talked about ending the war on drugs and abolishing the Drug Enforcement Agency and things like Homeland Security and all that we do not need. All of those were contrived for government control, and we just don't need that in our lives. Bringing the hemp industry back and legalizing cannabis, finally again, after seven and a half decades of stupidity in this country, is what this country needs. And please get out there and support it. I thank you for joining the campaign.